Hello, it's Dr. Gabe from First Look MRI, and this is a 41-year-old male with a shoulder pain. They had a falling injury and injured both their shoulders, and they looked really similar. On this axial PD fat set sequence, we can see the round humeral head. Here's the front. Here's the outside. Here's the glenohumeral joint. The posterior aspect, though, does not look quite so round. There's a V-shaped defect, a really deep defect here. And this is in the posterior lateral humeral head and their surrounding meridema. So this is a classic example of a really prominent hill sacs impaction injury. And you see these with the shoulder dislocations. The shoulder will dislocate, dislocate anterior and inferiorly. And this impacts the glenoid, the anterior and inferior glenoid rim. You get this deep defect rarely. Usually it's just a really mild defect or a little meridema. And this is a very deep trough. Sometimes they're deep like this when you see multiple repetitive dislocations in people who have like seizure disorders or uh, multiple falls. And now our job is to find the glenoid problem. So they almost always will have a labral tear or tear of the joint capsule or both, or sometimes they have fractures in the glenoid. This is so deep, you expect there to be a significant injury of the glenoid. So we're gonna go down, down, and we're, sure enough we see there's a fragment here, the glenoid is fractured, this little piece is rotated, and here we're getting down to the inferior portion. You can see this defect is truncated. And so our, uh, the question is, how big is this? If it's over 25% of the AP tendon, I'm sorry, the AP uh, thickness of the articular surface here, then that is more significant and they really need to get in there and fix that surgically. And so we need to say, is this, and I measured this, and it's about 30% from anterior to posterior, but two thirds here and one third here. And so this is a significant size. If we put up a sagittal image, we can see the same thing and get a better view for how big this is. So this is that bone fragment. Here's the glenoid. It should look like an egg or ovoid. And instead, we see this piece that's uh, fractured off of here. And it's anterior and inferior displacement of this big uh, fracture fragment. So this is what we call a bony Bankart lesion or a fibro-osseous Bankart lesion. And if we go over here, we can see this broad defect of the humerus. This is the humeral head. This is that posterior defect. And you can see the fluid in the joint. Now if we go back to our axial image here, we're going to look for the anterior joint capsule, the labrum. The labrum is attached to this piece of bone, so the labrum is torn. And it has to be torn when you have a glenoid fracture like this. So we can say there's a tear of the uh, labrum. It involved the whole anterior labrum and inferior labrum. It also went a little bit to the posterior labrum. And the next thing we look for is the anterior joint capsule. Is it intact? Is it torn? And in this case, we see part of the capsule coming over here. Looks like it ends, and over here it's all gray or bright, some complex fluid or edema. So they have a tear of the anterior joint capsule. Not surprising with this displaced fracture. And when we don't really see it here, you can say there's anterior capsuloperiosteal stripping or tear of the anterior joint capsule, just to let them know that it's not just the bone, the anterior joint capsule is um, torn and poorly defined. We also want to look for the middle glenohumeral ligament that's often torn with these. So we're going to go up to the top to find it. Right here is the middle glenohumeral ligament. We're going to go down. Looks good. Maybe a little uh, contour defect there instead of being nice and ovoid, but not ruptured. Down. And here we have the middle glenohumeral ligament. Down, down. And then here it's starting to blend with the joint capsule and distal uh, subscapularis and down. So it looks like it's not ruptured. Again, it looks a little funny towards the top, but there's no rupture of the middle glenohumeral ligament. And then the last thing we're going to do is look for the uh, inferior glenohumeral ligament as well, inferior joint capsule. And since the anterior joint capsule is torn, we kind of expect the inferior joint capsule to be torn as well since this fragment is uh, so low. And if we put on the coronal images, we'll be able to see that. And here we go. This is the inferior joint capsule. You don't really see it very well coming off the humerus, and this is part of the joint capsule, and it comes up here to the inferior glenoid rim, and it looks like there's a little gap. We don't really see it coming up to attach. Also a little bit of brightness here, which is a little bit of edema or fluid that probably has leaked through that torn joint capsule. If we take it step backwards here, this is the posterior uh, band of the inferior glenohumeral humeral ligament. It's kind of this thickening of the joint capsule. It's called the uh, posterior band, and instead of being well-defined and dark, it's gray, so that's partially torn. If we go a step forward, from midline we see the anterior band. Again, so the inferior joint capsule has an anterior thickening called the anterior band, and then a posterior thickening called the posterior band. And again, that posterior band is poorly defined, 
and partially torn. The joint capsule is torn here in the middle. And then again, this thick area here towards the front, the anterior band of the inferior glenohumeral glen ligament, we see it coming off, down, looping up, and here it goes. But you can see that separation between the bone and that inferior glenohumeral ligament, the anterior band. And you see this fluid track in here. So that's the other thing. They have a tear of the inferior joint capsule and the inferior glenohumeral ligaments. And that's it. So to just recap, they had a dislocation with a prominent Hill Sachs impaction injury, a prominent fibro osseous bankart lesion, which means the bone is uh, fractured, the glenoid. And there's also an injury of the surrounding soft tissues, the labrum, joint capsule, glenohumeral ligaments, and that. And they also had this uh, pretty significant joint diffusion. And that's it. That's it. So thank you very much. Hope you have a great day.